All right, what is up, my peeps? Joshua Smith here with another GSD Mode podcast real estate tip. And today I'm here to talk to you about what to do over the next two months to ensure that 2025 is your best year in real estate yet. It's really important to know and understand that even though we're here in October 2024, at least as of the time of me recording this podcast is October 14th, 2024, it is now that your 2025 really begins. We are in an industry where the fruits of your labor, you don't see the fruits of that labor for three to four months. So the actions that you do, the actions that you take, the preparation and planning that you put in place right now is setting you up to have that right momentum in 2025. And it is so damn important to do this now, to take advantage of these next two and a half months that we have available to us to make sure that you are running into 2025. You don't want to make the mistake that the vast majority make. Well, the first mistake that the vast majority of our industry makes is they don't business plan. They don't strategy plan. They don't have any element of precision. They just wing it for their whole entire damn careers. And that's why 49% of realtors last year closed one or less transactions, right? But then those that do, let's just say, come up with any element of business and uh, strategy plans, they wait until the end of December or the very beginning of the first of the year. So they wait to put that in place. They wait to start taking action on that. Well, then from there, okay, their first their first quarter, so January, February, March, end up sucking. They end up losing all that momentum. They end up having a terrible first quarter and they don't start building that momentum up until second quarter. So it's really like they don't have 12 months. They only have nine months, you know, to go out there and make 12 months worth of business results take place. So you do not want to make that mistake. So today I want to break down exactly what to do and how to effectively goal plan, business plan, strategy plan, and make sure that you have everything in place right now to have that momentum that you need. So you are running into 2025, have the momentum, have the right action plan, strategy plan. So you can go out there and make 2025 your best year yet inside your real estate business. So I got six different things that I'm going to cover and break down with you here on the podcast. But real quick, before I do that, make sure to check out gsdmode.com for more additional free training and free resources. And I highly encourage you to take two actions on at gsdmode.com right now. Both are 100% free. So the first one is my free in-depth three-hour masterclass that I have taking place right now, which is the six fundamental steps to three Xing or more your real estate business in the challenging market that we are going through right now. I'm walking you through, hey, what I've learned in my 20-year-long real estate journey that has allowed me to become one of the top realtors and team leaders on the planet was selling well over 7,000 homes. The six most important things that you must get dialed in to continue to grow and scale your business regardless of the marketplace. And this training is more important now than probably any other time, at least that I can think of in my entire career, because we are getting deeper and deeper into this economic winter. The market's going to continue to adapt and shift and change, you know, very rapidly over the next several years to come. Um, then from there, I highly encourage you to schedule a 60 minute, 100% free zoom coaching call with me personally to make sure that you have the best strategy plan in place, which I'll talk about here today. But if you are lacking any element of clarity on what exactly specifically is the best strategy plan, the best new client acquisition plan or plans in place that you need to have to get from where you're at to where you want to go based on your strengths, based on your weaknesses, your own unique goals, your own unique situation. That's what this free zoom coaching call allows us to do because it's just you and me breaking down your business for 60 minutes where I will make sure that you do not leave this free Zoom coaching call without knowing exactly what you must do to get exactly from where you're at to where you want to go. So we're going to eliminate all that guesswork, make sure you know what to do to crush it and kick ass. So if you want to take advantage of that, you can do both of those at gsdmode.com. Okay, so now let's jump into again the six-step planning process to make sure that you've got the right plan, you got the right goals, you got the right clarity, you got all the right systems, the right habit, all the right things in place that you need to ensure that you crush it. And again, I know I'm being a little bit repetitive here, but so much of success is through repetition. A lot of times we got to be reminded more than we got to be taught something new. So you want to get these things dialed in at the latest by the end of October or very, you know, at the absolute latest, I would say first week of November. And why? Because this is going to give you the time that you need 
to get all your ducks in a row, to get all this shit dialed in, to get all the kinks ironed out. So you can make sure like whatever the number of leads that you got to be generating per lead source going into 2025. Okay. You want to make sure that you are generating that amount of leads before 2025. Cause you don't want to be, you know, you want to be running into the first of the year with the momentum that you need. So it allows you to make sure that you're generating the business that you need to generate versus lead flow allows you to get your schedule in place and develop, uh, you know, the habits of getting that schedule together allows you to identify and dial in, you know, the systems that you need to tweak or have in place to be able to consistently execute on your strategy plan, allows you to develop any skill sets, habits. This gives you the next two and a half months to get all of these things in place and iron out all of those kinks. So again, this is the time to execute on right now. Okay. So step number one is to make sure, and this is, I'm just going to walk you through the core steps that I go through that I'm, and I'm going through right now internally with my own real estate team here in Phoenix, Arizona, to make sure that we are prepped and rock and roll and kicking ass for 2025 as well. Right. Um, so step number one is to get extreme clarity on what your long-term goals are. So this is, okay, what do you want? Why do you want it? Why is it important to you long-term? What matters most to you long-term? This is something each one of these six steps that I walk through, I take these every single year, I re-go through these. And why? Because clarity can change. You know, what what was mattered most to you? I don't know. What mattered most to me when I was 23, you know, 20 years ago when I was entering this business? Um, okay, what I wanted at 23 when I was not married, didn't have kids, single, you know, whatever dude, you know, a uh, young dude. Okay. Like what I wanted then was different than I wanted once I got married and started having kids. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now that I'm 20 years in this business um, and, you know, created what I've created, the success I've created, the shit that I want that is most important to me, you know, is a lot different than what it looked like 20 years ago. And sometimes these things can change year by year. What's really important to understand is that your 2025 goals, your 2025 plan exists and exists only to get you one step closer to what your long-term goals are. So I want you thinking about those long-term goals, your five-year goals, your 10-year goals, you know, your 40-year goals. Hey, you're 84 years old, sitting on your deathbed, replaying the tapes on how your life went, like what must take place for you to not die with a laundry list of regrets. So making sure that for your long-term goals, your long-term vision, you're regaining clarity on that to make sure that all those things that maybe were important to you before are still important to you, you know, at this time, or if they have pivoted, if they have shifted, okay, then shift those accordingly. So we want to make sure, because again, every year exists to get you one step closer to your long-term goals. So step number one, get extreme clarity on what you want most. So then that way, you know, when you know what you want most, okay, then you don't sacrifice what you want in the moment for what you want the most. Okay. So then step number two, uh, two is to then come up with your 2025 goals. Now, my recommendation to you is to don't just make this about your real estate business. You know, I can tell you firsthand that you cannot impact one area of your life without impacting the other area of your life, right? So anything that's important to you, make sure that you are setting clear goals. So maybe your health is important to you. Maybe your business is important to you. Maybe your family is important to you. You know, whatever those things are, okay? Like set goals for each area of your life that matters most to you. So then we can create an intentional plan based on those and make sure that you're doing the things that you need to do to have that well-rounded life. You know, um, cause I've made the mistake of getting like crazy out of balance where it's like, okay, business is growing, you know, and doing well, but my marriage is falling off of a cliff or then my business started getting hindered, you know, cause it's very difficult to go to the office and, and put your best negotiation skills and best energy and best focus, you know, on your business with the hours that you, hours that you have allocated your business when you don't know if you're coming home to divorce papers or not, or maybe your health is you know getting really poor. Okay. Well, I know a lot of people in this situation that reach out to me that, you know, are doctor appointment after doctor appointment, you know, they had health issues, their energy levels have crashed, you know, like all of these things, like I said, you cannot impact one area of your life without impacting the other area. So now we're looking at, okay, what are at the, the end of 2025? So it is, you know, um, December 31st, 2025. When you're sitting there by yourself reflecting on 2025, what must have happened in each aspect of your life that's important to you, where well, you are high-fiving yourself. You're like, fuck yeah, I did a good job. You know, right? Like you're, you did a good job and, and you're proud of your energy and efforts and all of those aspects. So we want to set those goals, right? Um, so now you got your 2025 goals for each aspect of your life. That brings us now to step number three, which is then creating your business slash strategy plan 
and creating your business slash strategy plan with extreme precision. So obviously you want to have a plan for each aspect of your life. You know, if you have health goals, whatever, like you know how to, you know, uh, hopefully you know how to go out there and, and build out, you know, a plan, but like a goal isn't enough. A goal without a plan just is a wish, right? Like we got to have the goal. Then we got to have the plan. Now we got to make sure the goal is aligning with our long-term vision. That's why we talked about that. Then we got the goal. Now we have to have a strategic plan with precision where we know every single day, every single week, every single month, every single quarter, what must happen to make that goal a reality. So if we're talking about your real estate business, just an example. Now this can differentiate based on if you're a brokerage owner, team leader, you know, individual agent, you know, what, what do, it can depend on, on what your role is, but yeah, you know, let's just talk if you're an agent, right? A uh, real estate agent. Okay. Well, you should know, okay, exactly. Okay. What are my lead generation activities? Like what are my exact lead generation plays? So for new client acquisition, as well as your past clients, sphere of influence, you know, repeat business. Um, so what are my exact activities that I'm going to do? How much of those activities must I do? on a daily, weekly, monthly basis, you know, so maybe your, maybe your plan is okay. In addition to your sphere of influence, past client, you know, uh, repeat referral strategy, but also making sure that you have precision there, what you must do daily, weekly, monthly to make the target and goals a reality there. But then from that, okay, then maybe you got two new plays. Maybe you're doing, you know, paid Facebook ads and open houses. Okay. Well then exactly. I mean, based on how many average leads you get per open house and what your conversion rates are, you know, how many leads must you get weekly? How many leads must you get monthly? Um, how many leads must you get quarterly? How many leads must you get annually based on your current conversion rates um, to close the amount of deals that you need to close from open houses? Then based on the average number of leads per open house, now that then dictates, okay, how many open houses that you need to do month, you know, weekly or monthly? You know, then with Facebook ads, let's just say I'm converting one out of 42 you know, and I want to be closing, you know, I don't 10 deals a month through Facebook. Yeah. Right. Well, now I know I need to get, you know, 420 Facebook leads coming in every single month, right? Here's what my cost per lead is. Here's what my daily ad spend needs to be, you know, right. Here's what my follow-up protocol needs to be. So not only do I know number of leads, but then I know exactly, okay, well, how many reach outs, how many conversations, how many appointments set, appointment conductions, clients, closings, you know, that I need to be doing on a daily basis. Three important KPIs that you keep performance indicators, three important numbers that you should know every single day that you must hit to win is, you know, number of leads, number of reach outs, number of conversations um, that you need to be generating. And again, done with precision. And you do this by historically looking at your business. Where's my business coming from? Now, if you don't have ways that you've tracked this or measured this or, okay, then you need to make sure that you're coming up with a proven strategy plan. You're not guessing, right? Guesswork is going to do nothing but hurt you. Like you want to make sure that you've got the right proven plan. And as I said earlier, if you are lacking on this portion of your 2025 plan, I'd be happy to jump on a free, 100% free, zero strings attached, no pressure, just it's me and you jumping into your business for 60 minutes, breaking down what your goals are, where you're at, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, um, um, what your biggest obstacles are, what market that you're in, what your schedule's like, you know, like, cause we got to make sure that we know, you know, what we're working with and what, you know, dealing in realities with your current, you know, unique situation. Then from there, I will come up with, and I will map out and tell you exactly what I recommend that you do to get from where you're at to making your goals 100% a reality. And you can do that by going to gsdmode.com if you're struggling with that. Okay. So then step number four is coming up with a habit plan. This is a, a step that so many miss, right? Because it's like, okay, look, you can come up with a plan and the plan is extremely important. But the plan usually isn't people's problem. The bigger problem is people's inability to consistently execute on their plan for a long enough period of time to make their goals a reality. So this is where your habit plan comes into place, right? So then I want you to identify, okay, what are the bad habits that you currently have that you need to break? What are the new habits that you must adopt? So then that way you can consistently execute on your business strategy plan and any of the goal plans that you have created for yourself. But what are the habits you must break? What are the habits that you must adopt that would prohibit you otherwise from making your goal a reality? Because like I said earlier, most people, and probably this still rings true for you, um, any of you that are watching and listen to this, but most people, it's not the plan that is the core issue that they have. It's their inability to stick to the plan 
to make it a habit to stick to that plan for a consistent long enough period to make their goals to a reality. So we got to break this down, deal in realities. Like maybe you got to get up early. Maybe you got to, you know, break the habit of staying up late and binge watching BS TV. You know, maybe you got to, you know, like whatever that may be. You know, maybe maybe your focus is all over the place and you're like squirrel and you don't have the ability, you haven't developed the habit and the ability to focus. Yeah, right. Maybe you 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 know have a, a bad habit of allowing yourself to get distracted all the time. I mean, like whatever it may be, like you're gonna know this for yourself, right? So identify what that habit plan is, the habits that you must break, the habits that you must adopt, and then come up with an effective, proven plan to break the bad habits and adopt the right habits. Okay, then number five, step number five is now that we have your long-term clarity of goals. Now that we got your 2025 20, goals in each aspect of your life that's important to you, now that we have the business strategy plans with precision in place, you got the habit plans in place, now we want to assess your systems and come up with your system plan. What are the systems that maybe you're using that no longer ex- need to exist in your world? What are the systems lacking? What are the systems missing? Systems exist for us to execute on our processes each and every single time in the same way to ensure things don't get missed. That's all systems exist for. But what are our processes? Our processes are just the step-by-step actions that we got to do to execute on our strategy plans. So it's like, here's step one, here's step two, here's step three, here's step four. So what systems based on your new or different strategy plans do you need to build out? Do you need to have in place? Do you need to adopt to ensure and help you execute on those processes for your strategies over and over and over each way, you know, each and every time the same way without uh, things getting missed and able to do that in the most effective and efficient manner. Systems are extremely important as all of you know. Okay. And then step number six is as soon as you have this in place, and this would be like, you know, okay, like maybe spend two days, you know, like you got four hours each day that you block off. So two days, eight total hours, getting one through five dialed in. You know, um, so like right now, just an example, it's a Monday. So maybe you block off Wednesday and Thursday, four hours, you know, or maybe block off this weekend, you know, whatever works for you. Well, then a second that this is in place, once this is in place, boom, commit to starting that following next day. Um, So we want to start now. We want to be running into 2025. We don't want to delay. We don't want to wait. We want to be running into 2025 with that momentum to ensure that you have an epic first year our first quarter to, to have that momentum that you need. Right. Um, and that's why we want to be executing on this starting, like I said, worst case first week of November. So you got all November, all December to iron out the kinks, to dial in, you know, to get up to that lead flow, to get up to the conversations and, you know, the dials that you need to to adopt and, and adapt to your schedule, to break those bad habits or adopt those new habits, get those systems in place. This gives us that two month run rate. And usually during the holidays, transaction volume slightly down. So it gives us a little bit more time to work on the business and really hone this shit in and get this dialed in. So again, 2025 can be our best year yet. So hopefully this is valuable. Hopefully this is beneficial. Again, make sure to check out gsdmode.com for more additional free resources. Truly appreciate you guys watching and listening. Keep crushing it. Keep kicking ass and I will see you soon. Peace.